Hey, what is going on guys? Nick Heron here back again with Fantasy Football Facts. My top 20 tight end rankings today. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoying this series here where we're putting together all of my video rankings for the 2018 Fantasy Football season. Guys, if you're interested, again, I do have a link to the Google document that has all of my updated rankings. These change pretty much daily, so make sure you check that out if you want to get the full breakdown on where I'm currently at with every single player. Um, and guys, I will also be trying to do updates throughout the season, so make sure you stop on back. We'll have more fantasy football content for you here as well. I did wide receivers and tight ends, or uh, wide receivers, quarterbacks, and running backs already. So today, tight ends, and uh, we're not going to do kickers and defenses. I've been over that, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into this, guys. If you are enjoying these videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below. Let me know if you have any questions as well. So we're going to do, again, 20 tight ends today, and the reason that we're doing 20 tight ends is because my personal opinion is that this is about the range where you want to stop drafting tight ends. Uh, I think that if, if these guys are on the board, you could potentially justify taking two tight ends in a standard league. I would never recommend drafting more than two tight ends in any standard scoring format. Uh, and really, my personal opinion is that you should just draft one tight end in almost every format. But there are specific cases, let's say you draft a Jordan Reed or somebody like that, that might be a little bit more injury prone, where you might want to get some sort of an insurance policy. So that's why I'm ranking a few more tight ends than I normally would. Uh, but again, I do have a bigger list of tight ends in the Google spreadsheet, so make sure you go check that out if you're interested. But we're going to start off at number 20, and that is Arizona Cardinals tight end Ricky Seals-Jones. Now, this is a guy that had some decent showings last season, but he didn't do a whole lot over the course of the full season. Um, he had some injury concerns, a couple different issues, and he actually has a potential suspension coming from this weird incident that happened at a hotel where like, he tried to go to the bathroom and they didn't want him to get into the hotel because he might have been drunk or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what happened. It's not necessarily for certain that he's going to get any sort of suspension from the NFL, but that is something that we do need to pay attention to. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you draft Ricky Seals-Jones. But this guy does have some decent receiving upside. He is a, a wide receiver type tight end. He's not somebody that's a great blocker or anything like that. Now, that can be a good thing. It can also be a bad thing. Uh, if they're down at the goal line, it's possible that he might not be on the field as often as a normal tight end would, and that's not necessarily a good thing. However, in the open field, uh, when we're between the 20s, he could be out there a little bit more often than some of your other more blocking style tight ends. So uh, I think he has some upside here at number 20. Uh, I wouldn't say that he's going to have necessarily a breakout season this year, but I like the possibility of him doing some decent things and having some good games against good matchups. Number 19, we do have Mark Andrews of the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Mark Andrews is the guy that I just moved up on my rankings, and the reason for that is because his tight end counterpart, Hayden Hurst, actually got injured this preseason, and it sounds like he's going to miss some time. He actually had to get a, a screw put into his foot, and the last time that I can remember that happening, I'm sure it's happened since, but the last, thing, the last major guy that I remember that happening to was actually Des Bryant. And if you guys remember, that happened a couple of seasons ago, and he just never has been quite the same. Um, not necessarily put, saying that Hayden Hurst will never come back and be good or anything, but uh, this is the opportunity that Mark Andrews needs. I mean, this guy is an absolute speed and size specimen. This guy's a beast of an athlete, so I really like his possibility of doing something good this year. Joe Flacco is been somebody that's targeted tight ends in the past. So I think there's a possibility that he does have a, dis a decent season this year. He is a rookie, though. Rookie tight ends typically don't do much. So, you know, don't put all your eggs into his basket or anything. But if you're in a system where or you're in a league where they draft two tight ends or you start two tight ends, I actually like him as a low-end tight end, tight end two option. At number 17, I have – or at number 18, excuse me, I have Mike Gesicki of the Miami Dolphins. And, uh, guys, he's expected to start for this team. And Mike Gesicki is one of the best tight end athletes that we have ever seen. Seriously. If you go look at what he did at the Combine, it was ridiculous. It was on the level of Vernon Davis in his prime. I mean, these guys are very comparable types of players, too. So I really like his upside. Vernon Davis, we've seen him finish as an elite fantasy tight end before. Mike Gesicki, the fact that he doesn't have any competition there in Miami and the wide receivers aren't spectacular there, I like this possibility of him actually doing something. I think he has a very high ceiling. Um, the floor is also low, though. I mean, he could be a guy that gets 200 yards on the year. Who knows? But I like the upside. I really, really do. I think he's a great talent, and it'll be interesting to see what he does this year in Miami. At 17, I have Tyler Eifert of the Cincinnati Bengals, a former elite tight end himself, but somebody that's suffered from a ton of injuries. He's already nicked up this year. It does sound like he's going to be able to be ready to go for week one, but you never, you never know how long he's going to last. And does he still have it? We don't know. 
Um, I'm ranking him down here at 17th because it was just a big question mark at this point. But he does have the upside to be a, a tight end fantasy one, or a, a fantasy tight end one. So I, I think that I, I don't want to rank him too low where you're not drafting him at all in, in any league or anything like that. But I also don't want to draft him too high where you're forcing yourself to start him on a weekly basis. At number 16, I have Austin Safari and Jenkins of the Jacksonville Jaguars now. Um, this is a guy that's another pretty good athlete at, at the tight end position, and he is certainly somebody that you could consider drafting as a low-end tight end one, see what happens in the early part of the season. There's a lot of competition at wide receiver in Jacksonville. We don't know who's going to get the most snaps there. We expect it to maybe be Marquise Lee just because he's been in that system pretty long, but like we have no idea what's going to happen there. What we do know is is that Austin Safarian Jenkins, as long as he's healthy, should pretty much be out there almost every single snap for the Jaguars this season, and that has some value. He's a guy that could end up being Blake Bortles' favorite option here, or at least his most reliable option, and that does have some pretty good possibilities of giving him you know, a decent fantasy season this year. He's not somebody that I, I think has a super high ceiling, but I would say that he does have tight end one upside, and I like the fact that he's going to be out there playing so much for this Jaguars offense that kind of is going to be bouncing between receivers throughout the year. Number 15, O.J. Howard, now entering his second season for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Another really good athlete. This guy came out last year, and he had some crazy yards per reception stats. I mean, if you look at how efficient he was with the targets that he got, it was crazy. It was absolutely off the, off the charts. Now, one thing I will say is that multiple of those, I remember them vividly in my mind. I, I at least remember two times where the opposing defense just completely Completely didn't cover him. It was a broken play, and he broke for a touchdown. So, you know, it, it's kind of fluky to some extent, I would say. But at the same time, he does just seem to be a guy that's in the right place at the right time. Now, he is playing a, a, a opposite of uh, Cameron Brait down there. Cameron Brait's not going away. I didn't rank Cameron Brait in my top 20, but I would say that there's a possibility that Cameron Brait does actually outscore O.J. Howard. What I would say, though, is that O.J. Howard's the guy that I think has a lot more upside. Um, he's a more balanced tight end than, than Cameron Brait is, in my personal opinion. He's a more physically talented tight end. Brait did get the new contract this offseason, so it's, like I said, it's not like he's going away. But I do like O.J. Howard in dynasty formats particularly. I think that he could end up being a pretty solid tight end going forward. Um, maybe like a Dallas Clark type of, of tight end, uh, if you guys remember him from the years past. He's a pretty physically talented player and a guy that could certainly be a viable fantasy tight end going forward, especially in that offense where they pass a lot. Number 14, Jared Cook of the Oakland Raiders. Again, I don't want to fall into the trap of being like, this guy is great. He's so physically talented. He's a great player. We haven't seen it happen. He's played with some good offenses and it hasn't happened. But what I would say is that right now, we're seeing a lot of hype coming out of John Gruden talking about Jared Cook. Like, John Gruden's acting like he's never seen Jared Cook play football, and maybe he hasn't. I don't know. I don't know how he could have been analyzing the NFL for this long and never have really run into Jared Cook, but that's basically the way that he talks. Like, he's never seen this dude play, and he's like, oh my gosh, he's an amazing athlete. He's doing crazy things out there. We've never seen anybody do stuff like this. And that type of hype from your coach, it might be just coach speak, but at the same time, out of a guy like John Gruden, I don't see him doing a lot of coach speak. I think he's just going to tell us like it is, to be honest with you. And I think he's going to try to get the ball to Jared Cook often this year. I would not be surprised at all if Jared Cook finishes ahead of Jordy Nelson, ahead of Martavis Bryant in terms of fantasy scoring this season. I don't expect him to pass Amari Cooper or anything, but I certainly think it's a possibility that he has a pretty solid fantasy season this year. So I do like Jared Cook, where he's going right now. He's basically being undrafted in most leagues, and I think he has some decent upside. And honestly, his floor is pretty high as well in comparison to a lot of the other guys that are going below him in fantasy drafts. At number 13, Jack Doyle of the Indianapolis Colts. Um, this is a guy that actually was second in the NFL last season in receptions at tight end. A lot of people don't realize that. He had 80 catches last year. Now, Indianapolis actually dra drafted. No, they brought in another tight end, Eric Ebron, this offseason. So there's a little bit of competition for him there. But still, I really like the fact that he was productive last year in a bad offense. I think Andrew Luck coming there is going to be a good thing for him. And I do think that he's going to be able to continue to produce decent fantasy stats. He's not a spectacular athlete, but he's just a guy that's out there very often in what should be a pretty decent Indianapolis Colts off offense. So I do like his possibility of catching another 70-plus catches this year, and that would be very, very productive for fantasy purposes. Number 12, George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers. Um, this is a guy who is in an offense right now that people expect to be very, very good passing the football. And my question to those people is, who's going to catch the touchdowns? The receivers are Pierre Garçon, Marquise Goodwin. I mean, guys that are just not 
big. They're just not physically intimidating at all. And so when you look at a guy like George Kittle, who's got like Rob Gronkowski type size to him, and he's an amazing athlete, I like the upside. I really do. I think that 10 touchdowns is not out of the question for George Kittle this season. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm going to predict that. I think that six or so touchdowns is probably more likely. But if he gets six touchdowns along with 700 yards or something like that, he's going to be a viable fantasy tight end. And like I said, he's got the upside to potentially do a lot more than that as well. I wouldn't expect him to get 1,000 yards. But again, 10 touchdowns is not out of the question for George Kittle. Number 11, David Njoku of the Cleveland Browns, second-year tight end, just like O.J. Howard, had some great moments uh, in his rookie season, but kind of inconsistent, had some competition last year. What I would say is that he's actually looked good playing with both of the quarterbacks this year in the preseason, whether it was Tyrod Taylor out there, whether it was Baker Mayfield. He scored touchdowns, I believe, with both of them in the preseason, and he's had some good moments. Uh, he does look like he's poised to break out. Another amazing athlete at the tight end position. I mean, like I said, guys, the tight end position just continues to get more and more stacked with athletes. And David Njoku is one of those guys, especially in dynasty formats, that you want to target late in your draft or potentially even early in your, uh, somewhat early in your dynasty formats. But uh, certainly in, in a redraft league, you can get him fairly late and he can be a viable fantasy wide tight end number one for you. At number 10, we do have Trey Burton now of the Chicago Bears. He steps into a system that has produced pretty good fantasy tight ends in the past. Um, it's a system that he's relatively familiar with as well, which is a good thing. But he does have some competition there with Adam Shaheen at tight end. They've got a bunch of new uh, options out wide there, whether it's Allen Robinson, whether it's Anthony Miller. They're bringing in other guys to, pat, to catch passes this season. Of course, Tariq Cohen out of the backfield. We do expect the Chicago offense to be better than they were last year overall, but I do think Trey Burton has some upside still, even though he does have competition. Uh, this is a guy that is physically talented. He wasn't able to surpass Zach Ertz on the depth chart or anything uh, out in Philadelphia, but he's a guy that was still getting targeted on a fairly consistent basis, and he is a good option uh, if you kind of wait on your tight end a little bit. I like Trey Burton as a potential breakout player this season. Number nine, Jordan Reed of the Washington Redskins. This is a guy, we've seen it before. He's an elite fantasy tight end when he's healthy. The key is, of course, when he's healthy. Uh, right now, we do expect him to start the season. How long he'll play, I don't know. But to me, I ride that out for as long as I can. And then once he gets hurt, if he does, we get rid of him. We get somebody else off the waiver wire. The beautiful thing about Jordan Reed this year is that unlike in previous years where you had to pay you know, a sixth round draft cost, you don't have to pay anywhere near that much this season to get Jordan Reed. And I think that's where the value is. The upside is still pretty much the same as it was in previous years. If he doesn't get hurt, he's an elite tight end. But if he does get hurt, of course, it's not going to hurt you nearly as bad as it did in previous seasons. I like Jordan Reed at his current ADP right now. Um, again, I think he has serious upside to be an elite fantasy tight end once again. The physical talent is there. Alex Smith loves throwing to the tight end. you got to love it. Number eight, Evan Engram of the New York Giants. This is a guy that's expected to see a lot of targets once again, but he is probably going to step back in targets, I would say. Uh, I don't think there's any way that he gets as many targets as he did last year. They're adding so much to that offense this season with Odell Beckham coming back from injury, with Saquon Barkley out of the backfield. I just do not see how he could possibly see as many targets as he did last year. However, the efficiency of those targets should be up. Actually, he was fairly inefficient last year on a per target basis, and I expect that that's going to change. I think he could actually end up scoring more fantasy points per target this season, and that's going to kind of counter, counter uh, what do you want to say, counter, uh, I don't know, counter, I guess, the, the uh, negative effects of the fact that he's not going to get as many targets. So um, I still do like Evan Engram. I don't think he's an elite fantasy tight end, so I'm not going to draft him in the top five, but I still like him in the top ten pretty securely. Number seven, Kyle Rudolph, an elite fantasy tight end as far as in the red zone, but between the 20s, he really doesn't do a whole lot for you. So it's a pretty much touchdown or bust for him. He was the tight end number eight in 2017. I have him at tight end number seven. I think Kirk Cousins is going to be a little bit more consistent of a passer than Case Keenum was. They're probably going to have a little bit more volume passing than they did last year, hopefully, uh, if you're somebody that's looking for the Minnesota Vikings passing game to succeed. So uh, I like Kyle Rudolph, again, to be a pretty solid fantasy tight end one, but he's not a guy that I'm reaching on by any means. If I miss out on him, it's not a big deal. I'm totally okay with taking the guys that are below him as well. Number six, Delaney Walker of the Tennessee Titans. Uh, another guy who is a pretty solid year-by-year -year tight end. Uh, he finishes the tight end number six last year. I have him, or, excuse me, the tight end seven last year. I have him ranked at tight end six this year. The offense is expected to be better. I think there's more competition for targets than he had in previous years. But at the same time, just overall, if the offense is more productive, that's typically good for the tight end position. So I do like Delaney, again, to finish as a pretty easy mid-level tight end one. 
Number five, Greg Olson of the Carolina Panthers. Now, this is one that I'm actually not that confident about because if you go back and actually look at what he did last year, even prior to being injured, he was mediocre in most games. He did have a couple boom games last year that really helped save him and keep his overall stats look pretty good on the end of the season. But at the end of the day, if you actually go and really analyze it, if you sit down and really look at what he did on a per game basis, it was not good last year. So there is some concern for me that Greg Olson may have finally fallen off and he's just maybe not an elite fantasy tight end anymore. But at the same time, he's just a guy that gets targeted so often when he's healthy that I really, really want to believe that he is not gone. I still think that he does have tight end, uh, like top five tight end upside. And I think at the worst case scenario, he probably finishes as a low end tight end one. So I think he's relatively safe. You don't have to draft him anywhere near as high as you have to draft some of the other elite tight ends. So I like that. Number four, Jimmy Graham of the Green Bay Packers. Now this is somebody that people are going back and forth on. Um, he actually led the NFL in touchdowns from the tight end position last year. He was second overall in tight end, er, in touchdowns, only behind DeAndre Hopkins. So, yeah, this is a guy that does have major upside in the red zone. We know Aaron Rodgers is a guy that can get the ball to his tall physical receivers in the end zone. He's the most efficient red zone fantasy quarterback that we've ever seen. And Jimmy Graham's one of the most efficient tight ends in the red zone that we've ever seen. So it's a good combination. The question is, does Jimmy Graham still have it physically? I'm not for certain that he does. And if he doesn't have it physically anymore and Aaron Rodgers is trying to force him the ball, it's, it could end up being bad things. We'll, we'll see what happens. He does also have some injury history recently, so that's a concern as well. Um, but still, I still have him as a number four overall tight end just because I think the upside is so high that he could catch another 10-plus touchdowns this year fairly easily, even if the yardage isn't there. At number three, Zach Ertz of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this is where my elite tight end tier begins, but I would say that I have all three of the next three guys on different tiers from one another. So Zach Ertz is in the third tier of tight end, but I still think I, there's a noticeable break between him and the rest of the fantasy tight ends. So Zach Ertz, I think, is a guy that has the potential to get to 1,000 yards receiving this year, and I'm not sure that many other tight ends do. Um, he's a very reliable tight end. He's not quite as high as far as an upside goes as a Travis Kelsey or a Rob Gronkowski. But at the same time, though, this is a guy that has done it for the past few years now, and he's been an elite fantasy tight end, and I don't see any reason why that would change. Trey Burton's out of that offense now. Um, they do add uh, a, a pretty good tight end in Dallas Godert, so you know we'll see what ends up happening there. But the competition maybe isn't quite as strong, at least to start the season. So I, I like the fact that he is going to be out there playing a lot of snaps in this really good Philadelphia offense, and I expect him to be an elite fantasy tight end once again this season. And number two, Travis Kelsey of the... The Kansas City Chiefs, I mentioned again, he's on his own tier as well. I think Travis Kelsey is an elite fantasy tight end and a guy I would draft in the fourth round of fantasy drafts pretty easily. Um, if he falls to there in the fourth round, certainly that's a guy that I'm targeting. Even at the late third round, I'm totally okay with taking, taking Travis Kelsey. I just think the upside of a guy like this is so valuable. I mean, he's somebody that could put up 1,000 yards, 90 catches. He could have eight touchdowns. I mean, that's a big season. That's a tight end one season that, like, you just don't get out of many other players. Uh, there really aren't that many guys that have that type of upside. And his downside is so high as well. Even with Patrick Mahomes throwing him the ball, I still think he's going to be very good. He did obviously have a really good connection with Alex Smith, so there is some concern that there might be a little bit of growing pain with Patrick Mahomes. But at the same time, he just gets so many targets. He's such a valuable player, and he's so physically gifted that I just don't see any way that he doesn't finish as a very good fantasy tight end again this season. Very safe, very good player, and I really like Travis Kelsey, like I said, in the fourth round if he can get in there. Number one, Rob Gronkowski. Um, honestly, I don't think there's any question at this point. He's the best fantasy tight end of all time. I think he's the best overall tight end of all time already. I mean, this guy on a per game basis is insane. His production is ridiculous. It's off the charts. It's it's so far and away higher than any other tight end on a per game basis that it's not even really a conversation, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, this guy puts up crazy touchdown numbers. He's obviously the main the main focus of that uh, the Patriots passing attack, and I don't see any reason why that's going to change. Obviously, Julian Edelman's going to miss the first few games of the season, uh, so Gronk could end up getting more targets than he even normally does. Uh, the only concern about Gronk is continues to be his health. Uh, obviously, we've seen him miss games, but when he's out there, he is an unquestioned elite fantasy tight end. He's the best fantasy tight end. I don't think, again, that there's any question about that. So uh, this is a guy that could potentially win the league for you, essentially, with the type of separation that he creates between himself and the field at tight end. If you have Rob Gronkowski versus somebody having Evan Ingram or having a, uh, a Trey Burton at tight end or even somebody lower than that on the list, like 
you're creating such a big gap on a weekly basis at that position that it's it's almost it's something that's very difficult to overcome without having other players really have huge games for you. So I, I really, really like Rob Gronkowski. I think he's viable to take at the end of the second round in a lot of leagues. Uh, I, I prefer to take him at the beginning or the middle of the third round if you can. I don't think there's any way that he slips to the fourth round in many leagues at all. But if he does, obviously the, the value is insane with him there. So I would certainly take him in just about every single format, at least in the third round. If he slips to the fourth, of course, you're just getting a, a monster value. So with that said, guys, that is going to do it for the tight end rankings. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you are new. I will be bringing you guys more fantasy content in the coming days, so make sure you stop on back for that. We're going to have sleepers, busts, and all kinds of different things leading up to the, the launch of the fantasy season this year in week one. So again, guys, stop on back, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.